Our next comic uh, comes to us all the way from Providence, Rhode Island. He had to be here for this show. He's a comic that I've worked with in a number of Cheap Laughs shows over the years. Um, and I still don't know why I keep hiring him. No, please, put your hands together for Mr. Dave Thomas. Welcome to the under 50 portion of the show. Assumption College, how we doing? Hey, University. University. That's not what it said on the website. I did my research before I came here tonight. Uh, I was pretty excited because I'm a big baseball fan. So when uh, Paul said we're doing a baseball fundraiser, I jumped on the website and I was like uh, 12 and 11 last year. Glad we're doing a fundraiser. Glad we're doing a fundraiser. I, I encourage everybody to donate. Hopefully we'll get a couple Dominican kids down here next year. <laughs> Turn this fucking team around. I'm not gonna lie, when I saw your record and I saw the name, uh, uh, I looked at the roster, I said, uh, this coach is white. This guy's definitely white. Thinks he's gonna win a state championship with a bunch of Chad and Michaels. No. You need a Pedro on this team, man. Just one one, and you're fucking in the playoffs, I'm telling you. You go to the Little League World Series, you forge a couple birth certificates, that's baseball. I don't know, that's baseball. You guys know, you guys know. Uh, the other thing I like to do is I, I checked out the coaches page. I wanted to see who the coaches were. Connor Burns, is he a coach? They can that guy? They can that guy? Because his face isn't even on the website. There was four coaches, and he was just the logo of the university, and everybody else had a picture. Only one guy was in a baseball uniform. I was like, he must be the one that they listened to. That's got to be the guy. And it wasn't Coach Rocco, so that was concerning. That was concerning. <laughs> Uh, there's a guy on this team, I don't know who he is, but he sounds like Hulk Hogan. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? There's one guy, he has a mustache. And every time he talks, he sounds like Hulk Hogan cutting a promo for the WWF. Yeah, no, yeah. He was back there, I heard him talking back there earlier. I heard him talking back there earlier, and he was like, is this gonna be clean comedy or dirty comedy? Oh yeah. And I was like, that guy's, that guy's the star of the team. He has to be. <laughs> or he's a relief pitcher. There's no in-between. He's either the best or the worst. <laughs> uh, it's cool, though, guys, because I'm a Mets fan, so I'm, I could root for you guys. I could root for you guys. I don't expect over 500, so you guys did better than my team, so thank you. Paul told me I couldn't swear or say bad things, so I was like, cool, I'll just shit on this team for 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. But we're here now. We're here now. Oh, man, when I say great, you guys say hounds. So I'm on Tinder, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Tinder now. I recently went through a breakup. I was in a long-term relationship. And I, yeah, now I'm on Tinder, and it's weird, because back in the day I was on Tinder, but I haven't been on in a long time. They've made some upgrades. I was unaware. Back in the day, you just swiped a lot and didn't get messages and wanted to kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> now, you swipe a lot, don't get matches, and want to kill yourself, but you can play an interactive dating game at the same time. So that's fun. That's real fun. If you guys see me on Tinder, please swipe right. Oh my God, I need to get off that app. I need to get off that app. I think people are using Tinder bios for the worst reasons. Nobody puts anything that's worth knowing in their Tinder bio. Every Tinder bio I come across, cat mom, girl boss, <laughs> world traveler. I'm a fucking janitor. I don't know, what am I? What do I say? I don't know. I've been trying a couple different bios. I've been trying a couple different bios. My first bio, I was like, hey, I'm Dave. I'm a comedian. If you like guys that are real hot and uh, can make you come, swipe right. 
JK, swipe left. That's not me. That's not me. I wish it was. My second bio, I figured, let's be real honest. If you want something in this world, put it out there. You might get it back. So my second bio was, just looking for a CNA that smokes Newport 100s that'll fuck my life up for six months. <laughs> Surprisingly, the best I did on Tinder. That was like, I think that might be their key demographic. I don't know. <laughs> my bio now is just the shruggy emoji. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even swipe left anymore. We're all on Tinder. It's in God's hands now. I don't know. <laughs> figure it out. Let's figure it out. Uh, I did get bored with Tinder, though, because it wasn't going well for me, if you guys couldn't tell. Uh, I did get bored, so I just decided uh, this is a good place to prank people, I think. It's a good place to prank people. I don't know if my pranks are too mean or not, though, so I'm going to run one by you guys. Uh, this one girl, she was like, hey, I saw you like to read. I like to read. What's your favorite book? So I told her my favorite book, and she was like, cool. The only two books that I wouldn't approve of uh, <coughs> communist manifestos and the Bible. And I was like, it's two really fucking weird choices, but okay. But I got this idea. I was like, hey, I'm not the most religious guy in the world, but as an artist, as an adult, going back and reading the Bible changed my life. I think you should give it a shot. I think you should retry it. I don't know. Maybe you're missing out on something. She was like, you know what? You're cute, I like you, I'm gonna give it a shot. So about three weeks later, she messaged me. Hey, I read the Bible. Boy, we have a lot to talk about. And I was like, no we don't, I just unmatched her. That was the prank, I just made her read the Bible, guys. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. I don't know why, just felt right. Tinder's bad for me though, because I'm bad at being sexy, guys. Real bad at being sexy. Uh, I, I recently went on a date and the girl was like, hey, you have nice skin. And I was like, thank you. Um, I have a great skincare routine. My skincare routine is just using what my ex-girlfriend used to use in the shower. That's my skincare routine. I don't know shit about skincare routines, but that's my skincare routine. So I was like, thank you. Uh, it's because my pH levels are extremely balanced. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I use this. None of them understood that joke. They have no idea what's happening right now. And I was like, yeah, it's because I use this great body wash called Summer's Eve. It smells delicious. That's a fucking true story. I wish it wasn't, but it is. But it is, I'm not gonna be in sexy. I talked to this one girl, she was like, I'm into role playing. I was like, I don't know anything about role playing. I don't know, I'm barely good at being myself. But I was like, I'll give it a shot, I'll give it a shot. So like I ruminated on it for a couple days and I was like, I gotta play a part. I don't know who I'm gonna be, I'm not a great actor. And then like I was trying to think of what I thought women would think would be like the hottest thing in the world and I settled on ice cream, man. <laughs> I don't know why. But I went on Amazon and I got this Ice Cream Man jumpsuit, which I paid $9.99 extra to have an ice cream cone embroidered on. I showed up at this girl's house and I was like, hey, sure is hot out there, isn't it? And she was like, uh, what the fuck are you wearing? And I was like, bet you want a piece of this two ball screwball, don't you? And she was like, what the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> and I was like, bet you want to hold this SpongeBob pop till it melts in your hand and nothing's left but the gumball eye drops. <laughs> and she was like, get the fuck out of my house. And I was like, I understand, I'm sorry, thank you so much, and I left. <laughs> it's bad at being sexy, I tried though, I tried. Uh, I recently started binge watching a new show. Anybody here in the Unsolved Mysteries? Anybody here in the Unsolved Mysteries? Just a couple people groaning, like, eh, all right. <laughs> well, I'm a big fan. Uh, so much to the point that um, I've been coming up with my own Unsolved Mysteries that I need solved. 
So much so to the point that I've been emailing them to the Unsolved Mysteries people. At the end of every episode, they say, if you've got an Unsolved Mystery you need solved, email us at unsolvedmysteries at gmail.com. So I did. Haven't heard anything back yet. I've heard nothing back yet, so I feel like I need to go over them with you guys just to make sure I'm not crazy, all right? Unsolved mystery number one for the last 25 years, Oreo's been claiming that they're Milk's favorite cookie. Does that bother none of you guys? Just me? Makes you wonder. I mean, you'd think you'd hear from somebody else about that. Chips Ahoy, the Keebler Elves have been pretty quiet, don't you think? Where are the Girl Scouts? I don't know. Makes you wonder. Does the CEO of Oreo have the CEO of Milk's daughter tied up in a basement every time Garlic Farms has been brave enough to draft a letter to the press? They just take off another one of her fingers? I don't know. It's an unsolved mystery. All right, unsolved mystery number two. Unsolved mystery number two. People want to know what happened to John Benet Ramsey. People, where Jimmy, where's Jimmy Hoffa's body? I want to know what happened to Lou Bega. Mambo number five? Yeah. Yeah. Did he start on five? Was there four before that? Where's Mambo number one? I need to know. Was he counting by five? How high did it go? Unsolved mystery. What happened to Tiffany and Rita and Christina and Sherry and Melissa? <laughs> Fucking cliffhanger. I don't know. <laughs> Makes you wonder. What was the name of that band? They had a whole brass section. Nobody ever mentioned them. All right, too far. I'm sorry. Too far. One more unsolved mystery. I think most of you guys are going to get on board. Unsolved mystery number three. Where is the clitoris? <laughs> Nobody fucking knows. I'm not going to lie. I've emailed them multiple times about that one. I'm like, even if you don't do an episode about it, just send me a map, please. For the love of God. I shouldn't bring him into this. I'm sorry. I know that's your guy. I'm sorry. That's my bad. That's my, that's my bad. I forgot that was your boy. My bad. I've been learning a lot of lessons recently. I've been learning a lot of lessons. Uh, one lesson that I learned is that you have to be careful about what you say in front of kids. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have noticed yet, but I'm not fit to be around children. No, I shouldn't hang out with kids. I'm not a cool uncle. I'm just bad. I'm just, keep your kids away from me because I'll teach them the worst shit in the world. And that's exactly what I did to my buddy Nick's kid. Uh, Nick was going back to college, and he called me one time, and he said, hey, I'm going back to college. Uh, do you know anybody that could watch Zach for a couple nights a week? And I was like, I'd love to watch Zach a couple nights a week. And he was like, I think you misunderstood me. I said, do you know anybody? <laughs> That could watch Jack a couple nights a week. I think he heard the excitement in my voice, and also he had no other options, so he let me watch Zach a couple nights a week. Zach's 11, and I was like, this is great because I'm going to teach this kid everything I know. I'm going to be a real father to him. I know he has a dad, but I was like, fuck it, I'm going to be a real father to him too. So uh, we'd hang out three nights a week uh, for about, I think it was like three months, and I taught this kid everything that I knew. We had a blast together. And then uh, one night, uh, Nick called me and he said, hey, we're thinking about getting Zach baptized, and we'd like you to be the godfather. And I was like, oh, shit, that sounds awesome. What do I have to do? He said, you just show up, and uh, you go through the ceremony, and that's it. You're the godfather. And I was like, cool. Uh, movies led me to believe I had to do a favor on my daughter's wedding day. This seems a lot easier. I will do this. I will do this for you, Nick. So I did. I went to the ceremony, and we went through the whole ceremony. And at the end of the ceremony, uh, the pastor, preacher, I don't know what you guys call that guy. Uh, he, looked at, uh, he looked at Zach and he said, Hey, Zach, before we finish the ceremony, can you tell us what the three most important things in life are? And uh, I think he was expecting Zach to say, like, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost or something like that. Like, something that, you know, you should probably know for this ceremony. Uh, but what Zach did was turn, look at me, put a big smile on his face... And this is the exact moment I knew I was fucked. Uh, <laughs> look back at the Priester Patrick dude. Priester Patrick, yeah, I don't know what they're called. Uh, and he said, uh, the three most important things in life, uh, n number one, is God invented bears so we can deal with women. <laughs> number two, cocaine's okay on weekends. <laughs> 
And number three, the Yankees are a bunch of goddamn scumbags. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but you can be ungodfathered at the ceremony of being a godfather, because I was. I was. So, I don't know. Another lesson I learned recently is that women always win. Yeah, I'm defeated to women in my career of 31 years, and I don't think it's going to get any better over the next 31. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, we had a pandemic. I don't know if you guys heard about that or not. We had a pandemic. <laughs> And during the pandemic, I had to start finding new hobbies. So I came up with this game. And I'm sure some of you guys probably played this game, too. Uh, the game is acting like your girlfriend died of cancer five years ago right in front of her face. No, none of you guys played this game. This is just me. OK. Uh, I don't know why I started playing this game. We went on a road trip because we had nothing else to do during the pandemic. We had to get out of the house. And on the way up to Maine, uh, it was real quiet in the car. Nothing was happening. It was real quiet. And my brain said, hey, Dave, how funny would it be if you acted like she died of cancer five years ago right in front of her face? And my brain went, fucking hysterical. Let's try it. <laughs> so in the middle of this car ride, I just looked out the window, and I just said real softly, one day I'll tell our kids about you. <laughs> and I just drove the rest of the way there and didn't say another word. And I knew that it was implanted in her head because out of the corner of my eye, I saw her go. So I kept it up. A couple weeks later, uh, I was making dinner. I set the dinner table. I went back. I got all the food ready. And then I went back to the dinner table. And I stood at her spot. And I went, one of these days I'll remember. And I unset her spot and put everything back. I just, without saying anything. And then I sat down and started eating. I didn't, just left her right there in that little hole. She was like, what the fuck is happening? And she's like, I know something's happening. And then uh, this one was my favorite. I did this a couple times, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we had a picture of us on a side table next to our bed, so every once in a while before bed, I'd go, I'd pick that picture up, I'd walk over to the window, I'd put the picture up to my chest, and I'd just go, ah. <sighs> <sighs> miss you! And I'd go and I'd put the picture down, face down, back on the side table. I'd just get in bed and go to sleep. I don't know. This is just a stupid game I started playing. And then I learned quickly, women always win. Women always win. Because my ex-girlfriend started playing her own game. And that's where she started fucking dudes like I died of cancer five years ago. <laughs> Defeated. I'll never win against a woman, I swear to God. I'm trying. I'm trying. Paul told me not to swear when I came up here tonight. And I was like, uh, fuck that. <laughs> having a good time. We're having a good time. Uh, guys, I love being a comedian. I think this is one of the coolest things that I could do. I think it's like one of the best things that I do. But I think uh, the worst thing that ever happened in my comedy career happened to me the other day. That's that my boss found out that I do stand-up comedy. This is a problem. This is a problem because my boss thinks we're friends. We're not. I just work for the guy. That is the extent of our relationship. And now we're in this weird place where he thinks he can tell me things that would be really funny for me to say on stage. And they are awful. They are absolutely <laughs> awful. I do a lot of janitorial and maintenance work. The other day I was in a boiler room. I was laying on my back. It was about 110 degrees in this room. And my boss is standing next to me. And he decided to just uh, take a real wide stance right over my head. <laughs> and he just said, uh, hey, Dave, you know what would be really funny to do in your little comedy thing? So he calls it every single time. I don't know why. You know what would be funny to do in your little comedy thing? Laundry mats. They're weird, right? And that's it. He stood there for five more minutes. What do I say to that? What do I say? I don't know. Like, thank you? I don't know. The other day, we crossed each other in the hallway. I was probably 12 steps past the guy. I heard, hey, Dave. I figured this must be important. I turn around. What's going on? Tooth fairy. That's weird, right? You should do that in your little comedy thing. <laughs> I was like, I fucking hate this guy, man. I hate this guy. But I got this idea. I was like, I want to go to a show. 
and I'm going to do all the jokes he's been telling me to do exactly the way he's been telling me to do them. I'm going to get a video of it. I'm going to bring it back to him, and I'm going to let him hear how fucking stupid he sounds every single day. So I did. I went to a show where they paid me to do comedy. It was actually Paul. <laughs> Waste of money. And I got on stage, and I said, hey, guys, laundromats, they're weird, right? That's exactly what happened for nine minutes, pure silence for nine minutes. And then I got the video, I brought it back to him, I sat him down in his office, I said, hey, I've been doing all the jokes that you've been telling me to do exactly the way that you've been telling me to do them. And the smile that came on this guy's face almost made me feel bad for what was about to happen. We watched that video for nine minutes in dead silence. At the end of the video, he looks at me, he says, uh, what was that audience, a bunch of skeletons that left their funny bones at home? <laughs> you should use that in your little comedy thing, Dave. I hit that man. I don't know if something snapped in my brain, but I hit that man and I got fired. So if any of you guys are hiring, coach, you need somebody to scout the Dominican kids, please let me know. Because there's only so many of these fundraisers I can do comedy at. Seriously, when's the next one, Paul? Holy shit, when's the next one? Uh, before I get out of here, guys, uh, I want to talk to you about my next, um, my next line of work. I'm thinking about quitting the janitorial business. I think I'm thinking about doing something a little bit more creative. I want to work for Hasbro, and I want to invent board games. But before I leave my job and my career, I want to run by my best ideas with you guys and then you guys can let me know if I should just stay a janitor or not, okay? Top three board games that I've come up with. The Game of Death. It's like the game of life. But really, who gives a shit if we live anymore? We all just want to know how we're going to die. The Game of Death. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> you guys are going to love this next one, then. Connect five, let's do it for the odds this time. Yeah. Let's do it for the odds this time. Connect five, we'll add another row, let's get spicy, I don't know. <laughs> Board game number three, and then I'm gonna take this wine and sprint off this stage before those baseball guys can catch me for shitting on their 12 and 11 record last year. <laughs> yeah, I said it again before I got off the stage. Board game number three, Hungry, hungry stick bugs. Let's end fat shaming, guys. That's my time. Oh boy. David Thomas, ladies and gentlemen. David Thomas, all the way from uh, Providence.